Hi, and welcome back. Um, this is Cami from TMH Art Studio and also Dream Big Classes. Um, every Wednesday I try and do something new, as well as on Thursdays I do um, Wrap Up Thursday. Uh, and that one I'm working on a sunflower, if you're seeing this video. So this today I have wanted to wrap this up too, but there are some new ones in this one that I have been working on. And what I did was each month I picked the, that flower of the month for, um, you know, January, February, March, the months, and the flower that associates with that. This one is March, um, and March flower is the daffodil. So uh, even though I signed off on this, I realized I forgot to put my signature honeybee on here. Uh, the honeybee is also to remind everyone um, that we need to uh, support them, uh, sponsor them, do whatever we can to save our honeybees. So each one of my pieces, uh, I decided to always put a honeybee on it. Um, when I was working on these, I did this back in Ohio and I forgot to put my honeybee on. And even though I signed off on it, doesn't mean that um, I can't go back into it because it is my, my painting. So I went ahead and I'm knocking out uh, the honeybee um, for my daffodil. So I was able to complete this one and then my rose for June. Uh, and then I also went in and, and knocked out my honeybee. So these are um, five by seven cards, um, or canvas boards actually, sorry that I picked up at the dollar store and they also had them at Michael's. Um, some of these I did get at Michael's and they give them in small packages, um, which is a little bit more economical than at the dollar store. I think they sell them three for a dollar. Um, so if you find that you want to do one of these and do it along with me, these are five by sevens. I went ahead and painted these all black so that they had a black canvas. Um, and the reason I did that is I want my flower to pop. So um, I started working on others. This is from May. It's a lily. So what I'm doing is I'm, I went in and I am knocking out my flower with white. So this way the colors that go on top are not um, changing too much in value with the black background. Now granted, I could have painted around my flower with black, um, but I prefer to do my whole background and then go back in and knock out what I need. Um, that makes it easier for me, it's not for everybody, because I, I'm doing this extra step of knocking it out. But what I like is that my paint then for the background is an even flow. There's no stop and start with it, you don't see me cutting out my pattern. Um, so I'm actually just cutting out the pattern through my knockouts. So um, this one I have here, I have a few others that I started, um, but like anything, I got busy and things happen. And I know Wednesdays are, are supposed to be my new painting um, day, but um, I just felt like doing these today. Um, so uh, it's my Wednesday and I can paint whatever I want. But what I'm gonna do instead of jumping in on one of these that I've already started, um, I'm gonna start with the fresh new one. So here's my board. And this one is July and I might pronounce them wrong, but it's uh, Larkspur for July flower. So again, I just went in I got my little canvas board and then painted it all black and let it dry. And then I went back in and I drew out my pattern um, of my flower. Now again, I'm gonna go in and I'm just going to start knocking it out in the, the white pattern of it. So what I do whenever I'm painting, I kind of more or less, I'm drawing. So we're going to start um, wherever you feel comfortable with. Again, if you want to do one of these, um, 
you just go find yourself um, the flower for that month. Um, I was able to have some that I had old photos from, but also there's an, there's plenty of photo places out there that are offering um, free references, uh, Facebook artist um, artist for art. No, photos for art. Artists for photo. Photos for art. <laughs> I'll put it in the description. Um, so I do use them a lot. And let me turn my light on. I have the overhead light, but I need my extra light, which is not coming on. Okay, so something must be unplugged somewhere. That's okay. So what I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm just going to go in and I'm going to start knocking out my petals so the brighter part of my petal of where I it, this, these are blue uh, so there's going to be more white that I lay down for the brightest areas and then I'll have less um, white in my up in the darker shadow areas now granted again you don't have to paint the whole thing out. You can knock it out um, afterwards with the black. But I wanted to challenge myself, and this really definitely challenges you because you're working on a black background and not a white background. So you kind of have to think a little bit in reverse um, on where your darks and your lights go in for your, uh, when you're using the white. Now I could just easily go in and simplify it and paint each petal completely white and then do my blending um, with my colors and do it that way. But I still want to kind of use my background um, for the shadows. So I am trying to work with that instead of against it. So this part in here has a lot of shadow going on. So when I lay my blue down, I want the black to kind of um, work with it instead of against it. And then I want the outside edges to be a little bit brighter. So again, I wanted to challenge myself. So this, this is me challenging myself right here by using a black background. So what I did with this one is I went in up close and personal with this one uh, in the sense I wanted to see more of my petals on the flower. So uh, like on the others you have more black in the background. This one is going to be, this one is, there's not going to be any black in the background on this one. So yeah, if I knew that's what I was going to do with this one. I might have kept this as a white board, but then it wouldn't look similar or in the same category of the others um, because it would be a lot brighter or just have a different look to it because I didn't have the black in the background. Now I'm not saying it won't look as good as the others, but um, there might be a little bit of a variation and again, this was an afterthought of me wanting to take this flower and zooming in on it. So I'm kind of getting a little bit up more close and personal with it. Now again, I am not going to be looking for total photorealism. So they're still going to look like my flower. But I probably won't be going in and getting all the... Um, all the um, the, vine, the veins and everything that's going on with it. Um, but I'll give indication of shadow and all that good stuff. So I'm just going to keep building and working and knocking out. So this part, um, 
I did want to make it to where you guys were painting right along with me. So I'm not sure if you want to all see me paint each one of these in a knockout. So this part I probably will speed up a little bit uh, on your end. And that's one thing I'm going to have to eventually check with you guys on is once you start seeing more, do, do you want me to speed up areas? Do you want me to slow down areas? And then I know you have that choice too, that if you want to get past all of this, you can easily um, pull it and move it forward. So again, I'm just going in and knocking out So I am creating shadow. I'm working like if I'm working in actual color and building up where my highlights are um, in the color. Now again, you don't have to do it this way. But you know what's kind of funny though a little bit is um, I really like the way this looks. I really like the, the effect with the white that I almost don't know if I want to put color in it. But of course I will. But I do like this buildup of white. So all I'm doing is when I get to my shadow part, I'm using just a basic water brush. And that's just a brush with no paint on and just water. And the water's not heavy, it's just where I cleaned my brush, uh, dapped it, uh, tapped it a little bit on the paper towel, and I'm just moving the paint around to create some of that blend. And again, once this dries, I'll notice that some of my areas need to be a little bit brighter so that I can easily go in and add some more. So this is also, again, a building process because of the black background. What I like about this for the challenge is it makes you really have to not necessarily think, but use, are you, do you want to use the background as part of your shadows? This way you don't have to add any black. You're kind of just using the shadow part of the black to be part of the painting. So let's say if this was black, do I really need to add more black to it? I'm just working my color in and leave the black exposed. Um, so it, it has you taken a different approach and a different look at your artwork when you're using a black background. I will be down the road, working with black uh, paper with colored pencils to show you how to work on that or how I like to work on it.
what I like sometimes about the challenges is that um, it strengthens your, your art a little bit more. It gives you, um, I don't know, it just trains your eye. It trains, it trains everything when it comes to art. You look at things a little bit different and how you handle it. That when you do go back and, and do it something in a different way, I just think you feel a little bit stronger in what you're doing. You're, you're just in, every time you paint, every time you pick up a pencil, a paintbrush, chalk, whatever it is you're working with, each time you do it, you're going to see that you're getting a little better each time. There's been some pieces that I've been really excited that I want to work on. <clears throat> and uh, when I started to want to work on them or get close to working on them, um, I wasn't feeling it. It wasn't coming together. And right now, since um, it's not a commission job and everything I'm doing is basically for me, uh, for right now, and maybe later on have them in shows and stuff, I don't have to. I'm not pressuring myself to make sure I do this or make sure I do that. Um, so right now I'm being pretty flexible in what feels right and what I want to do. Because when you start getting freelance um, jobs, you do have to set time aside for it um, sometimes you do have to not sometimes when you're having a bad day and you're just it's just not happening you do have to work through it to get the piece done but don't pressure yourself if you've given yourself enough time to turn the project in to the person then just um, sort out your time do I have you know do I have time to walk away from it Come back to it. Um, just, just be kind to yourself when you come when it comes to painting. sunflower painting that I've been working on for a while. It's, I find them relaxing. And there's very few things that, you know, art does relax you. Art at least relaxed me after a rough day. my day. I'm trying to see where my petals are.
what I like about the white is that you're um, able to use the background in so many different ways and you're only using one color that you can if you do it right you can like I said you can almost use the the white and the black as your finished piece but of course I'm taking mine a little bit further but it teaches you to look at where are my highlights where are my shadows at Right now I'm kind of bouncing around a little bit. <laughs> So what you're able to do too is once it's dry after you put um, one layer down, I like to go back in and start shaping up my petal a little bit because they're not all perfect in um, shape. Okay, some of them are bowing a little bit. So you have to remember too, as in anything, we're not what we're painting, we're not what we're drawing. So we can't just go in and just lay paint down. I mean, we can't. If you paint the item long enough, so let's say I, I, I painted hundreds of this flower, you might find then you start to get to know the flower. You're, you know how the petals lay and the different folds in it. So yes, you can then paint it by memory, but if this is your first time painting it, then stop and really look at what you're painting. Just don't assume you know what a petal looks like. I mean, per, we all know what petals look like, but each petal on all the flowers, they're a little different. And even, the petals on the same flower you're painting are drawing they're going to fold a little bit different they're something may have a brown spot here or um, a variation in color over here because of the way the light's hitting it or something had happened to it so try and stay as close to what it is you're painting by really looking at what it is you're painting so that each petal has its own um, personality. And I am kind of leaving a little white line, or actually a black line, uh, around each petal one to make sure that I have it broken up a little bit but two more shadow might fall in there so I am except for what I just did right there 
I am trying to break it up just a little bit so that I can see the shape of the petal, which as I keep building, I'll be able to knock out my lines when I add more paint to it or when I start putting my colors in, then it's going to jump out at me a little bit more. So right now I'm kind of not necessarily all over the place, but this flower, the is, I kind of get lost a little bit, to be honest with you. I look at one and then forget which one was I looking at. And uh, so definitely the petals will not be as uniformed or matching, I should say. Um, my reference folder uh, picture because uh, I am looking a little bit everywhere. Especially since I'm up close to it, I did not go in and knock anything out of it. I just, um, in the sense I didn't, I didn't reduce my photo or enlarge it or remove the section I'm not using. So, it kind of, um, it's, like I said, this is a little bit more of a challenge of what I have given myself, but I hope the end result, as I keep building, um, will be what I'm looking for. Now, there is, um, some white petals, uh, flowers in the center here, which I'm going to leave to the very end because I'm going to lay the blue and then I'm going to come back and lay those colors down. So again, that's like this, some of these petals as I'm putting them in, get pushed back into the background. And as we get closer to the petals on top, on top and up and moving forward, um, they get middle ground and then of course your foreground. I'm working flat on the table here only because, again, um, I don't have a camera set up yet on working on an easel. And then when I do work on anything, I work on a tilted board and not on a standing easel. I just, I'd like to be able to, I don't know, feel like I'm getting into my painting and getting up close and personal with it. easel it just is not comfortable for me so do you all like to work on easels or do you use um, flat on the table or a tilted board flower has lots of petals up close and personal with next to each other it's a beautiful flower there's just a lot of um, shadows and highlights and layers upon layers I get on this one to see after an hour where I stop. I only do one hour paintings on Wednesday and Thursday just so I feel like I'm accomplishing something during the week. On my other days I'm usually doing work work stuff or I'm prepping for a class that's coming up.
let me tell you, it's so easy to get lost of where, on what pedal you are on when you, when there's so many of these. Has anyone ever painted, um, what did I say, this was a, a um, Larkspur? Am I saying that right? So again, I'm just going in and I am knocking out my highlights and um, my shadows. Now this side I did not draw out, so I'm going to freehand it a little bit. Like I said, this is, there's really no opening space. This just has petals laying on top of petals. And this one, I'll definitely have a bumblebee in it, but the bumblebee is going to have to be laying on top of one of the, of the petals. There, I'm going to have to go in and touch with, with black a little bit. Some of it came off there. That's the only thing I find too with canvases. If you're using paint or gesso, I think gesso, if you take your white gesso and put a little bit of black in it to create a black gesso, may lay a lot better than laying uh, acrylic paint down. That's all I did on here was lay acrylic paint. I believe they do now create black gesso. But all you really need to do is just take a portion of your white and put some um, black acrylic paint in it. Now in school, they always had us, after we moved some of our acrylic, to go back in and add a little bit of water to keep it from drying out. Um, also, it seemed to make the, the acrylic, to, I mean the gesso, go a little bit further. So I don't know if that is still preferred today, um, if they request that or show that to the new artist, um, but I'm old school. So there's a lot of old school um, things I've learned from other artists who just passed it down, you know, when they're teaching. So. I know there's a lot of little tricks or a lot of little, um, useless information that some would find useless um, that I was taught that actually I still use today and benefits me today that every now and then I'll share with y'all when, um, when something comes up. Now again, on this I have a little bit more paint in my palette than I intended to because, um, again, I'm painting in small sections, so you don't need a lot of paint. So if you find that you don't use it all up, Put it in a sandwich bag with a um, sponge that's slightly wet to keep your paint from drying out. Some have it where you can put it in a Tupperware um, flat sheet like you would put cakes or cookies in. Uh, you can put in one of those and, and seal them with a wet paper towel or sponge and that will protect it a little bit longer and keeping it moist. And well, okay, I know some people hate that word. It'll keep your paint um, wet so that it's not going to dry out. Now, after a bit, it will start breaking down, but hopefully, within that time period, you are using um, the paint up so it's you're not going to waste. I don't like to throw paint out if I don't have to. I always try and incorporate it into my next painting.
so again, I just keep referring back to my reference photo. And when I drew these lines a few months back, to be honest with you, I don't have a clue <laughs> what flower I was looking at when I did these. So I'm kind of um, going in and just kind of redrawing and putting in some new petals. So it'd probably be good once, um, if you find you're doing one of these, don't wait a few months like I did to come back in. Kind of go ahead and start knocking out your areas um, where your petals are so you're not guessing um, later on what is what. Right now it kind of looks very um, art deco in the in here. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> so I'm trying to work with what I already have here and incorporate what I'm seeing. And even then it's still kind of a challenge. So like I said, this working on um, black is was my challenge for me to train myself, to train um, my eye in kind of a negative, positive uh, painting, which is, would be like I'm knocking out my positive area, and this would be my negative area, the black. And in so doing, like I said, I'm kind of, kind of getting lost here a little bit. And like I said, for if you missed it, I drew these petals out several months ago, and I laid the these over here on the art table to do for down the road to paint and today I just felt like this is what I want to do and in doing so uh, when I realized as I was laying this down part of it I can make out and part of it I don't have a clue where and what I was looking at when I put in the other petals so again I'm just going to go in find a petal and knock it out in here and just make it work. Again, this shows you too that um, no one's going to see this next to the original that I'm working with. Uh, they may get as lost just as much as I am. <laughs> um, but uh, it's still a nice challenge for yourself to get creative and um, and yeah there's some issues that I'm having that I'm like okay this is not working but there's no mistake in art there's you know you just work your way through it and just keep doing what you can to make it work and that's what what I'm doing so just keep building and building By the time you're done, you'll have finished flowers that you can be proud of. And we'll see if I can get um, some blue laid down before my hour is up. So again, just follow. the petals so this is also like my drawing part 
instead of laying graphite down, I'm laying my paint down and knocking it out and drawing where everything goes. And then I'll come back in, like um, down in this section here, I will come back in and put a little bit more white in on certain sections. So when I lay my blue down, it will pop a little bit more. So like anything, you want to um, get this as close to the finished piece as possible and making sure that what you're doing is um, how you want it is you know it's correct it's hard I mean in painting it's not I mean you can easily go back and make corrections I've shown you that on my toucan where I missed a spot and I went back in and I corrected it um, so even if you feel like something's not correct you can still go back in and fix it. It's not over until you say it's done and it's over with. So like my, um, like my rose, I decided I want to put a B in. Even though I signed off on it, I haven't done anything else with it. I want my B in there. So I'm going to go back in and work on my B. Now, if I find something else that's going on that I don't like, I still have that option or that right to go in since it's my piece and fixing it. Changing it up, you know, make corrections. If something doesn't look right, then do something about it. Like I said, at the end of the day, it's your art, your piece, until you're able to say, that's it, I'm done. Like right here, this petal was bothering, bothering me. So what it is, is I'm gonna go back in and put a petal in front, and then this one's gonna fall in the back. So I'm going in and making some changes and correcting it as I see it, um, as I'm moving along. And again, why we have that? Why are we able to do that? Because it's our painting and we have that right. We can do whatever it is we need to do to be happy with what we're working on. Again, if you're not sure about something, turn your painting upside down. Work on your painting sideways. Um, go stand in front of the mirror and look at your piece. Turn, um, take a picture of it. Um, walk away and then look at the picture. Review it in the mirror. See if what you're trying to do and, and um, what you're trying to get across is, is happening. Is it coming across? Are you presenting it in the light that you want everybody to see it? Sometimes you do have to take a step away to look at it. We are so much on top of it and we're like in the box with it that we do need to get outside of that box and review it from a distance with fresh eyes. That's why sometimes I just give myself an hour if I'm not in, if this is not a commission job or I have to have it done by a certain time for whatever I decided I was going to um, do with it for an event or sell it um, at a competition or whatever, then I have a time set on myself. But if you're, if you're not, and if there's no time set except for what you're trying to do, then don't pressure yourself. This is supposed to be something you enjoy doing. And if you're not enjoying it, if it's not giving you um, peace, 
if it's not giving you that that wow I you know that felt good I I'm glad I did that aha moment <laughs> I guess um, then to take a step back maybe you're using the wrong medium I'm not saying give up the art maybe the painting portion is not your thing uh, maybe it's too stressful because you can't fill it but you pick up a, a colored pencil and that works amazing for you or chalk or whatever that you want or crochet you know whatever the element is that you pick up that tool that works for you um, be in it from working with uh, leather or woodworking there's so many things out there that um, you can try and work with until you find one that works for you it just might not be the painting and it might not be right now I know when I used to crochet um, my grandmother showed me the basics and then I would go around my girlfriends who crocheted and they had a different pattern that they were taught so they taught me that pattern um, which was was great now when it came for me to sit down and follow a pattern in a book <laughs> that, was a, that was a nightmare I'm like how can anybody do this none of this makes sense and it was in the thing was is I was too young I didn't understand what was being um, put before me I also didn't have an instructor I was trying to learn on my own so sometimes it's it's a stepping stone just don't give up just uh, work with something that works for you that complements what you're doing that feels good and then it'll it'll all click it'll it'll all come together now in some ways too what I'm doing here can also be because I'm using more water than paint in some of the areas can also be um, assumed or looking like watercolors now the only thing that's bad about all the water I'm using is it weakens the acrylic paints so it's not as archivable that this will lighten up and if it was put in the sun it would not be very good but um, I will be building up more paint on it making it thicker so it won't be definitely archivable so okay what were so basically I have everything down that I need so I'm just going to go back in in some areas and I'm just going to add a little bit more bright white well, it's not bright white but I'm going to brighten the white up for this is where I want my highlights and then we have enough time to go in and start laying down some of the blue Now the other flowers that I've started will probably fall in on my Thursday since I have started them except maybe the white ones since you've already seen basically how I'm doing this one um, I could always refer back um, to this one for everyone to see how I did the white portion of the flowers um, this way I can go ahead and do those on my Wednesday and then the ones that I've kind of started, I can put on my Thursday, wrap up Thursday. So I did able, um, or was able to get some of the, leave some of the black background in. So I kind of tilted this a little bit to the side. This way it gives the flower like it's um, bending over so I still have the close-up of it but I'm also showing the you know that these are, are a little bit um, 
they're not real thick so it's not going to take up the whole painting or the canvas per se so this just shows um, almost exactly what the width is all right so i am able to go in and start laying some blue down and what i will do on some areas is i will have to add some white to it so i'm using um, primary blue and phthalo blue to start laying my colors down so the primary blue is going to be where my highlights are so again i'm just going to pick a flower let me find one that there we go and i'm just going to start putting in the basic uh you know start laying down my color now you can if you get this bright enough white um, you can almost go in and just do a wash on top of this to give um, kind of the same effect. I might do that with one of them is get, I might do that with my Lily. Really, because that one has a lot of white going on. And I might just use it to do a wash of color. So right now I'm just going back and forth with um, my primary blue and my phthalo and I'm just going to start building my petals up and this way too I will eventually go in like this dark black right here that the background um, once I get the one petal done I'll go in and knock out that with the white just so I again I did it for separation of my petals so again I'm just going in and drawing out my color placement I think this would be good to do a wash on it. So again, this is going to be a building process. You're going to put down or keep painting it until you have it exactly where you want it to be. Cut down in the detail. If you want to keep it simple. That's what's great about flowers is that you can go in and make these as real as you'd like or as abstract. Paint and bring out what it is you want to accomplish, what your objective is. I'm not using a lot of paint because one this is this is only a five by seven and I don't really need to go in using a lot and just keep working it until you, you get exactly what it is you want wait until it dries some and then come back into it and build up a little bit more 
And again, this part doesn't have anything to do with the background being black because we pretty much knocked that out. This is just now when you're laying your color down, you want to make sure you're getting the effect you want without overblending. Unless you want to overblend it and, and make it nice and smooth. I don't always like to overblend. I do like to see um, paintbrush strokes. Now again, this has a center uh, flower petal coming out, um, which I will put in last. So I'm not even acknowledging that it's there. And then I'll paint right over top of it. And again, this way too, I'm not sitting here focusing on knocking it out. I'm just focusing on my petals. Now, depending on how detailed you want to get, and you can get pretty simple. You can do these in washes, very simple wash, and get one done within an hour or so. They make great gifts. They make great uh, last minute, um, just gifts to put in cards and um, to give to somebody. I made a few um, when I was at my mother's, just she needed something quickly for the next day. One of her lady friends at church wasn't well and wanted, to, you know, to give her something nice. So I went and quickly did a quick, uh, simple wash um, flowers that she was able to give. And it took no time at all because I wasn't focusing on every detail, every little, little, you know, vein or you know I just I had fun with it and sometimes when you do that they turn out really really good this I'm just taking a little bit I wanted I want to have these to be a little bit more realistic or real not well realistic I'm not looking to do realism So sometimes what also happens is um, you're painting that and painting that and you're just not getting it. Leave it and go to the next section because it's probably right where you need it to be but you're so focused on getting it to look perfect that it will get lost in um, the painting next to all the other petals. So kind of be aware of that, that you may find that you don't like one of them, doesn't mean that it's wrong and you're, and that's the reason why you're not liking it, it's just not coming across. You just need to step away and go somewhere else and then without you even realizing it, you'll find that, or you will realize that it looked fine to begin with, it looked okay. You're just overthinking it. So that's another thing too, is try not to overthink it. Just keep working and building and, and uh, before you know it, it all comes together. If you find it's easier and um, you don't like the quiet, because I don't, um, put your favorite movie on for background noise or put on a favorite book you like listening to or you've been wanting to listen to but just haven't had the time, do it now while you're painting. You get lost in the story that you're not overthinking what you're painting unless there's a reason you need to really really stay focused on 
what you're working on. But I find when I get lost, my thoughts go somewhere else. I'm at peace. Um, it all starts to come together. And sometimes you have to just get the color down and then come back to it. Like, let's just say, let me finish this one up and then I'll give you an example. But see, I like blending, so even though I'll still give you an example, I can still come back to it. And again, everybody paints different. I know I mentioned this before. Everybody paints a little bit different. Everybody handles things and does things a little bit different. I'm not trying to be like them. I'm trying to enjoy what I am doing to the best of my ability. And my goal is that by the end of this year I can go back and pull out my first painting that I started working on in 2020 or 2020 that was last year in 2021 and compare them did I grow um, has my technique improved am I moving a little bit faster or I'm not as slow which you will find you will find that you'll paint a little bit um, with more confidence I do know that that's what I'm looking forward to is getting to that point where I'm not second-guessing myself all right so we are coming at the end of our hour but I do want to show you something real quick if you find you want to paint more on this technique is so we went in and laid down all our white you can if you want go in and lay down all the darks um, you can go in and start just putting your where everything that is in shadow you can go ahead and start laying that down so if I want to I can handle it just like I did the white go in and um, blend it out Also go in and soften the edges. So let's do another one over here. So you do have that option. You can go in and like I said, like the way you did the white, you can go in and just start putting all your shadows in. Um, and then you go back in and you'll put your highlights and you just keep building, building, building. Um, there's so many different ways that you can paint. There's so many different um, avenues that you can take that feel comfortable for you and how you want to paint. So there, you know, I don't think there's a right or wrong way. Um, the end result is that you get there. You get to where you want to and that is a finished piece. I don't like doing it this way because, see, I like to go in 
while it's still wet and do my blending. But there's nothing wrong in doing it the other way. There's nothing wrong with it at all. And especially if you're trying to get a certain look. If there's a certain style that you prefer. Just because I'm painting these like this doesn't mean that's how you want to paint them. All I'm doing is showing you how I like to paint them. So when you're putting something down, change it up a little bit. Don't don't paint it exactly how I'm painting it. Give it your own flair. Make it your own. Because honestly, if I had to sit down and do this again, it definitely wouldn't look like this because I would feel and have a different objective of what I would want to be getting across. So. Just keep building, building, building. Look at the shapes. What is the shapes telling you? Don't, you know, you can look at the whole petal but then focus on the shape of that of that section that you're working on. Because we can't, I mean, we can draw or paint the whole petal at one time, but if you're going back in and putting in the different highlights, the shadows, you can only do those one at a time. So again, don't overwhelm yourself. If you find that something doesn't look right, then fix it. Don't go, oh, there's a mistake right there. Again, there's no mistakes in art. You just are now seeing it a little bit different. Since you're laying color down, you're going to see things pop out a little bit different because now we're, we're paying attention closer to detail, the colors, what's coming, what's being placed where. So that's going to change now that we're adding color. So definitely keep that in mind. And again, just have fun with what you're doing. These eventually, I'm gonna have postcards made out of them. And then, um, depending on what the, well, I'm hoping to get these done soon, I can start sending them out over the rest of the year. birthday cards for my family and friends and then those who um, I didn't send out yet for the beginning of the year I will hit them up in 2022 they'll be getting um, theirs during that time but yeah I'll be sending them uh, their flower for that month of their birth um, and postcards and then eventually um, they may just end up getting the originals I don't think the guys would be as interested as the ladies would be so um, yeah But again, these are just simple little, fun little paintings that you could easily do at home. If you don't want to do something major, uh, large, uh, you just don't have the time or the patience to do it, pick a small canvas, figure out what it is you want to paint or what you enjoy. Um, it could be lighthouses, um, it could be birds, butterflies. Make them small, work in a smaller uh, diameter of, of a canvas area. This way you don't feel so overwhelmed by it. Um, I put black all in the background of mine. Maybe you want to do all yellow or blue. It doesn't have to be black. I did black just because I want my colors to pop a little bit more. But if you use the right colors, and depends upon what you're painting, a different color may make your um, project pop. So um, don't put yourself in a box and say, I can only do it this way. 
you don't have to just find what works for you what it is you like and enjoy so again this was what I did with this is I just wanted to do a smaller version of flowers that I'm going to turn into postcards to give to family and friends um, around their birthday And then eventually, if they want the originals, I, you know, this will be their gift in itself. Unless you have a lot of birthdays in that month, then um, turn it into a drawing. Okay. Pick a number between one and ten. Whoever's the closest gets the gets a piece of artwork. I know we're coming up on our time. I might be a little past it, but I'm going to go ahead and finish this petal up. And again, I will definitely be coming back into these um, once I get more of the painting closer to being finished. Then I'll come back in and add highlights, add the centerpiece. So there's still a lot more to do on these, even though they're simple. Um, more realistic to the best of my ability and sharing them with you so if you're working on a flower with me or you're painting this one that I'm also painting or one similar to it I do hope you share it with me so I can see um, how you're coming along on it we're each other's cheerleaders so it's always good to have a fellow artist cheering you on and being supportive. We all need that um, in our life. And more so us being artists where it's just nice to have um, someone has our back in our art. Just you know, there's so many people out there who like to criticize what we're doing or Actually, there's just so much negativity in the world that you want to do something positive. And sometimes you need fellow artists to give you that positive feedback because they could see everything that you're doing and they can relate to it. So I'd love to see your work. So as always, I um, hope you give me a thumbs up and subscribe so that you're able to see the conclusion or this may take um, another couple hours. What's good about also filming these is it'll, it shows me how long it takes for me to do some of my artwork. Um, I hope to down the road get into some more detailed ones that take a little bit longer and then some really quick ones that you can do in an hour. So that'll be my objective down the road all right so I'm gonna stop here because this pedal right here is starting to get on my nerves <laughs> so I will definitely have to come back to that one so this is the beginning stages we went in and I had a black canvas and then knocked it out with white on um, for where my flowers are going to be the petals and then slowly now I'm going in and adding my color which in all and at the end of the day is a slow buildup to a finished piece you always want to look at your shapes, your shadows, your highlights, um, everything that creates that petal or whatever the subject is that you're working on. So I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am and I look forward to being with you next week and continue on with our, uh, I'm never going to remember this name, our Lark's Burke. Uh, again, I'm probably saying that wrong. I do apologize. And this is for the month of July. Um, so. Uh, again, I thank you for joining me. Um, give me, again, thumbs up. Let me hear from you. Let me know what's going on. And uh, have a great day. And I'll see you guys next time. Until then, bye-bye.